Hello Year 3 and welcome to today's math lesson. We're going to get started straight away. So here is your do now. I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. Right, so your do now is going to be some addition and subtractions. All you're going to need is a pencil or pen and something to write with. I suggest that you pause the video to complete this do now and then when you're ready press play because we're going to get started straight away so pause the video now fantastic and let's check our answers should start be getting familiar with some of these equations because there are a lot of very very similar ones that we've been doing with our column addition subtraction this week great if you need to check them a little bit longer press pause you can always maybe come and revisit them and try a different band just for practicing your addition and subtraction so let's move in on with today's lesson so we are today going to be looking at solving word problems using addition and subtraction so our steps to success are we need to underline the key information identify the known and the unknown using our part part whole model and then we're going to write and solve the equation using the column method so let's look at today's star words so our star words are add plus total all together any one of those words in a question is going to mean that it's an addition equation addition then we have subtract minus difference take away and remaining any of those words are going to mean that we're looking at a subtraction equation and then of course we have equals and our good old friend part part whole and then we have these two words known and unknown so what we here have here is our known values are what we are norm are given in the question so looking here we know that we know that if we that we have, for example, here 51 and 70, we're going to add them together. That is going to give us our unknown. We don't always our parts it are not always the known parts. We don't always know what our parts are because that is subtraction. We don't always we sometimes the whole isn't the unknown part subtraction. So just looking at this one, an example, just to show you what I mean. So we can see here that 51 at 70 is equal to something. So what is the, our product here? Our product is, for example, our product is 121. But I could do 121 take away 70. My known, what I know here is I know my whole and I know one of my parts, I don't, my unknown is one of the parts. So we'll be taking a look at that going through, a oh, little bit of a, as we are going through the lesson today. Right, let's have a look at, I'm going to stop sharing, and we are going to have a look at some examples. So we're going to go through a few examples on the visualizer, which will want me doing step by step. And then we'll go through two on the board where I'll be pausing for you to complete them yourselves. So have a just have a look and have a watch in these first two and just see what think about the steps to success that I'm following. So my first step is I'm going to be underlining the key information. So I'm going to be doing this as I read the question. So I've got to think, what do I need to find? What do I need to do to find out the answer to my question at the school fate? The cake stand raised £152. Oh, got a number there. I think that could be useful. I'm just going to underline it. And the raffle raised £159. There we go. I think that's going to be useful too. How much did they raise all together? Aha. Uh -huh. That word all together means, remember what it means? It means it is an addition. An addition equation. So I've got my key information. I'm now going to put my key information into my part, part, whole model here. So I've got two pieces of known information. I am going to add them together to make an unknown. So 
I know in this case, I know my two parts. And they are known. So my two parts are 152 and 159. Obviously, we know they're with pounds. So I've got pounds there. So with the so I know. So we don't know our whole. That's our unknown in this case. Remember, what we know and what we don't know in our part part whole can change, and you'll see an example of that. A few examples of that actually today. So now we need to do our column addition because that is how we're solving all our equations today. We're not going to be doing things mentally. We're going to be using column addition. So 152 add 159. Remember addition, it doesn't matter what order we put them in the columns. It does for subtraction though, remember. So we need to do our column addition. So we put it in our place value. I've written my hundred tens and ones at the top. Two add nine is equal to 11. So I 11, 11 ones. Can I have that in my ones column? Absolutely not. So I'm going to regroup. I'm going to put a little one down here. And because that is my that is my 110 from my 11 one. So I have one one and one ten. 110 add 11 is equal to 11. So this I've got to remember to add on in my next column. 5 add 5 is equal to 10. So I've got 10 and then I need to add on another 1. I'm going to cross it out because I've used it. So I've got 11 tens. Oh no, that's not going to work. So I need to regroup again. I'm going to send 1, I'm going to send my 10 tens which is 100, to my hundreds column. 1 add 1 is equal to 1. 1 add 1 is not equal to 1, Mrs Turley. 1 add 1 is equal to 2. Add another 1 is 3. So the answer is three pounds, £311. Did very well, I think. Pretty good money to earn at a fate. So you can see here now we've completed our part part whole model. The unknown was our whole, which we achieved by adding my two parts together. We're now going to look at it from another perspective, because as I said, the whole is not always the unknown part. The whole is not always the unknown part. So let's have a look at another example. Farmer Jack had 721 cows and he sold 162. How many does he have now? So, Farmer Jack had 721 cows and he sold, so he gave away, got rid of 162. How many does he have now? So that's my key information, my two money, my two amounts of cows. I think sold is important because once you, if you sell something, you don't have it anymore. So it's, it's subtraction, and but we're wanting to find out what how many he has right now. So once he has sold the 162, so I am looking, if you think about it as an equation, just to help us write it down, I'm looking at 721 cows, and then I'm selling my 162 cows, which means I'm subtract, subtracting them. So I want to find out how many cows he has now. So I'm going to put, I want you to think quickly how we put this in our part, part, whole. And what is also what we know and what we don't know. So we know how many cows he sold. So that means we know 162 is one of our, our known values. We know it's a known value. Hmm. 721. Well, that's what he starts with. And I'm taking away 162. That means my whole is also my known value. Which means I need to find out how many are remaining, and that is my unknown. 
So, if I could spell unknown correctly, unknown, remember it's got a silent K in there. So remember, the, the unknown is not always the whole. You sometimes have to find out the part. So what we will find out is the unknown, which is the part we don't know. And if we add this to the other part, we get the whole. And the way we can find the missing part, the unknown part, is subtracting the whole from the whole, subtract a part. So remember, subtraction is whole, take away known part, equals missing part. Whole, take away known part, is going to give us that missing part. Really need to stress that in our in our minds. So let's write this out. Remember, we always start with the subtraction at the top of our column subtraction. We always start with the subtraction. No, we always start with a hole at the top of our column subtraction. OK, so let's have a look at this. OK, 721 take away 162. Can I take from one one, two ones? Absolutely not. I'm going to go and I'm going to take one of my tens to help me and turn it into to 10 ones so I can do my subtraction. 11 take away two is equal to nine. Right, looking at my tens, can I take from one ten, six tens? Absolutely not. I need to borrow one of my hundreds and turn them into 10 tens. We're gonna have 11 take away six. 11 take away six is equal to five. Then we are going to take away 100 from 600s because remember we've already used one of our 100s in our regrouping. So 6 take away 1 is equal to 5. So our answer is 559. So what we didn't know was how many cows he has left. He has 559 cows left. If you added those two parts together, you would get that same answer, which you can always do. Pause the video now and check that. Right, I'm going to share my screen again and we are going to have a look at some more on the board. So, here is another question. A pizza restaurant had a busy weekend. They made 389 pizzas on Saturday and 254 pizzas on Sunday. How many did they make all together? So, I want this. We're going to identify together what the key information is and then I want you to identify the known and the unknown using the part whole model and then write and solve the equation using the column method. So let's do underlining the key information together. So what is what are we what is our key information? So the pizza restaurant had a busy weekend. Interesting but not vital. They made 389 pizzas on Saturday. Yes. There's a number there, 389, and 254 pizzas on Sunday. Another number. They made, how much did they make all together? Aha, there's that word, all together. What does, when we see the word all together, it means we're going to be doing an addition equation. So I'm going to write my addition equation out just to start. I'm not going to put it in my column addition yet. I'm just going to write out my addition equation. I want you to, on a piece of paper, I want you to put this equation into your part, part, whole model and identify your known and un your unknown and then solve this equation using column addition. OK, press pause now to complete that. Great. How did you find that? Should be. I imagine you all did brilliantly. So. We need to put these two numbers into our part, part, whole model. So we're looking at an addition equation, which means we have our two parts to make a whole. So these in our part, part, whole model, we know both of these, but we don't know our whole. So let me put our numbers in. So this is a known fact, and this is also a known fact. So we know these two bits of information. I'm just going to highlight them in green just because it. So 
So we know that's not green, that's purple. That's green. We know these two numbers. So those are our two known values. We don't know, we don't know how many pizzas they made all together. It is our unknown. So I hope that's what you identified in your part, part, whole. Right, let's have a look at solving this equation. So we're going to do some column addition, not with a highlighter, because that's a little bit too chunky. Not with bright green, because that's going to hurt everyone's eyes. Third time lucky. Hurrah. Let's remember to put 100 tens and ones just to help with our regrouping. So 389 add 254. Obviously wouldn't be in my book, I'd be using a ruler. So 9 add 4 is equal to, well I know 10 add 4 is equal to 14, so I can just take one off and then that is equal to 13. But I can't have 13 ones, so I'm going to take my 10 and move it to my tens column. So I have three ones in my ones column. 8 add 5 is equal to 13, but I have one 10 rem remaining, so I now have 14 tens. I can't have 14 tens in my tens column. I'm going to take 10 of those tens to my hundreds column. And then 3 add 2 is equal to 5. Add another 1, So we, because that 100 we've moved from our tens column and is now equal to 6. So they made 643 pizzas on the weekend. Mm. Busy, busy, busy. And it's now maybe one pizza. So we now know our whole, our known value is our whole. So we now know our whole. So I hope this is what you got. If you didn't get it, maybe just take it through and stop and do step by step with me. Because it may, it will hopefully, practice makes perfect on all of these with your regrouping and also with the method and identifying the, the known and the unknown. So we're going to do another example. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to underline the key information together and then you're going to press pause to complete it, to complete it independently and then we'll, we'll go through it step by step. So there are 328 children who are members of sport, a sports club. There are 328 children who are members of a sport club. Yes. Um, 189 of them are boys. How many girls are members? So, interesting. Let's have a look again. There are 328. Here's a number. Of members of a sports club. 189 of them are boys. There we go. How many girls are members? Mm, this is interesting. So my whole is the number of children. My whole is the number of children. So my whole is the number of children. So I am going to put this here. And I'm now going to get you to press pause to complete the rest because I've given you a massive head start there on identifying what where the whole is. So press pause now. OK, this was hopefully would have made things a lot simpler. We know this is the whole because we're trying to find out in our group of children, which is 328, what this, what, how many are girls? So we can say we've got in our whole, our parts are the number of boys and the number of girls. And together, our whole is the number of children. So our whole is 328. And our part is, parts are 189, and we don't know the other part. So this is where it gets interesting. So our known parts here are this whole and our one part. What we don't know is one part. But because we know our whole and we know one part, we are going to be doing a subtraction. So remember, subtraction is your whole, which is 328, take away your known part, 189. That's going to give us our answer. So this is 
So it's our whole, take away our whole, and it's going to give us our known part. There we go. So let's solve it. So going to be column subtraction as usual. 100 tens and ones, 328, take away 189. Oh, I already can see now I've lined it up, it's going to have some regrouping. So eight take away nine, eight ones take away nine ones. We can't do that. I'm going to borrow one of my tens so I can regroup. 18 take away nine. Oh, that's much better to do. That equals nine. So now we're looking at our tens. One take one ten take away eight tens. That's just not going to happen. I'm going to need to borrow and regroup from my hundreds. Regrouping, borrowing, they're all it's different words, the same thing. So I'm going to regroup one of my hundreds into my tens column. So I'm going to take my one hundred and give it, turn it into ten tens. Remember, breaking it up. Eleven take away eight is equal to three, and then. I have two take away one, which is equal to one. So 139 of these members are girls. So that was my unknown part, but I now have my two parts, which make my whole. So I think the moral of this is it's not always the whole, which is unknown. I see so many children who try and put, um, try and put their whole value down here, put their whole value in one of their parts because they automatically think that the parts are always the bits which are, the parts always must be known, it, the whole must always be the unknown. It's not. For subtraction, it's no, it's whole, which you know, take away your part, which you know will give you what you don't know. So this is why we practice this over and over again. So it is time for your independent task. It is time for your independent task. So variety of different word problems. Uh, there are two addition and two subtraction. Um, two addition and two subtraction. Then there is kind of a question at the bottom, which is can you write your own word problems? So you're going to be writing your own word problems. So for example, an example for the bottom one would be if Jack buys 125 Pokemon cards and then he's given another 328 for his birthday, how many Pokemon cards does he have altogether? Something like that. It doesn't have to be over the top or outlandish or but make sure it's a word problem. Don't just write the solve the question the question. So you've also got a challenge as well on your task sheet. But remember, this is your main focus to answer these four questions. Have a great rest of the day. I'm looking forward to seeing your work on Seesaw and thank you very much.